Hello, my name is Russ Eukin. I'm an Iowa State University Extension Beef Specialist. I want to talk to you today about feedlot facilities and how they relate to cold stress in feedlot cattle, well, ultimately performance of those cattle. Uh, this is part of a video series on feedlot facilities brought to you by Iowa State University Extension and the Iowa Beef Center. To get started, let's just review briefly where we're talking about effective temperature Basically, that's the temperature that cattle feel. There's a range uh, that cattle perform optimally as far as performance and health. If it gets above upper critical temperature, they feel heat stress. Below a lower critical temperature, <clears throat> there's cold stress, and those cattle don't perform as well outside of that optimum range, the thermal neutral zone, we call it. If we look at a temperature, actual temperatures, uh, these would be some estimates on feedlot cattle. Basically, if we have a summertime hair coat, a lower critical temperature might be 59 degrees. Or if that hair coat is heavier but wet and we don't have as much insulation value, we can have that fairly high lower critical temperature as well. As we get a heavier fall winter hair coat, you can see that temperature, that lower critical temperature actually goes down. So the main factors related to cold stress then would be the temperature and wind speed and in the case of cattle, the condition of the hair coat. If that hair coat gets wet or matted, it limits the insulation value and of course precipitation and humidity and or mud can limit that insulation value. So if we're looking at facilities then, which of those factors can we influence with facilities and how much impact do they actually have? These were some trials done in several years ago in the winter time. This one was in southwest Iowa with a hoop building, an open front building with an outside lot, and comparing those to just uh, ambient outside temperature. You can see in that first column in the red box that average temperature in that feeding period did not change by type of facility relative to what was outside. However, in the fifth column, you can see the wind speed that did vary quite a bit as we went from outside and ambient conditions to a open front or to a hoop building. Then in the bottom table, uh, the cold stress index was calculated uh, for both the hoop and the open front building. A fairly high percent of the time that there was no impact compared to the ambient, which would have been 50 percent of the time there was some either mild, moderate, or severe cold stress in those particular situation in that year. But the main reason we saw that was because of the wind speed reduction in the hoop and the open front building. Here's a monoslope building, happened to be in northeast Nebraska, again a wintertime trial. Uh, you can see the air temperature in that top line, slightly warmer in the building, uh, different locations compared to the outside in the first column. But you can see in that third row the wind speed Outside was about 15 miles per hour in the building, about one mile per hour, whether we're at the front and the back. So as you look at the wind chill index that was calculated, quite a bit lower outside versus what was in the building, mainly due to the wind speed reduction, which was about 95% in the building. So here's some estimates on looking at different type of facilities and how we reduce wind speed. Even in an open yard, cattle are probably going to find some type of shelter from fence or feed bunks or something. Wind breaks 50% of normal, sheltered 30% of normal, and a confinement building probably 20% of normal. Lots of different configurations on the sheltered, so again, these would be estimates, and we may see more or less wind speed reduction. Again, with a shelter, and if we're going to have a roof over it and keeping cattle dry, that's also going to have an impact on cold stress and that lower critical temperature, but really the buildings don't do much to impact the ambient temperature it is outside. So how do we actually measure cold stress on cattle? Well here's uh, several indexes, all slightly different. The first two are basically uh, a combination of wind and temperature, and little different uh, scales between the two, and the second one is modified in that 8 to 15 degrees centigrade range. The cattle comfort index includes humidity and solar radiation in there. 
and again a little different scale at looking at the level of stress. Kind of a thing to remember on each of these though, none of these factor in a wet or matted hair coat and they're mainly used to predict stress conditions, cold stress conditions, and there's no direct calculation of performance. The National Research Council, when they're looking at energy use in cattle and how that relates to maintenance and gain, they do do a calculation for cold stress. Actually, it's a calculation of lower critical temperature, and in addition to factors we've talked about before, they look at high thickness hair coat and wind speed to figure out what kind of external insulation that animal has, the tissue insulation or body condition of the animal, the heat production from the ration that's being fed, and then if the actual air temperature is below that calculated or adjusted lower critical temperature, uh, there's increased energy for maintenance and since more is diverted to maintenance, there's lower gain or lower production from that animal. The other thing that's adjusted with uh, weather, and particularly cold weather, there's estimates uh, based on temperatures, as you can see there, that dry matter intake would increase. However, if we have severe cold stress, and if we have a muddy uh, lot condition, that could actually offset some of this and reduce feed intake. So the next question we wanted to look at then is how much time do cattle experience cold stress in Iowa? Well, it's going to vary from year to year, season to season, of course. But we looked at 2006 to 2014, eight years worth of weather data from six regional stations in each part of Iowa. They reported daily average temperature, wind speed, precipitation, solar radiation, humidity. And then we could actually calculate lower critical temperature for like an 800 pound steer on a normal feedlot ration and compared that to the actual temperature. And then if there was precipitation on a day, we reduced the, the hair coat insulation. Then we could mimic shelter and reduce if there was wind that particular day by 66%. And basically we eliminated any kind of precipitation events with a shelter and had a normal hair coat insulation value. So we could compare what would then outside versus to inside in a shelter. This is it in a nutshell here. Lots of numbers, but in the first column, you can see over here, we have temperature ranges. We divided up all those days in that eight year period into different temperature ranges. And then we calculated what percent of the days were below a lower critical temperature if that animal was actually outside with no shelter. And over all the temperature ranges here in the top row, 18% of those days, this would have been year round, not just winter time, had 18% of the days were below the lower critical temperature, or we would have had increased maintenance in that 800 pound steer. If we reduce that wind to one third of normal, only 10 and a half percent of the days there in the third column, days that were below lower critical temperature, and if we made the hair coat dry in all those cases, just of a, about 0.15% of those days would have been below lower critical temperature. So what we did then by adding shelter, we reduced the days cattle were in cold stress by 7.5%. And then if we made those cattle dry by giving them shelter or kept them dry by adding shelter, we reduced the days that were in lower critical temperature by 10.35%. The other interesting thing here is that most of those days with dry hair coat were in that 10 to 40 degree range where, where we might have had a little bit of precipitation and those cattle were feeling cold stress mainly because they didn't have insulation. That kind of gives us a picture of how many days we might benefit from shelter, but how much benefit is there? Well, this gets uh, into looking at temperature ranges here again, and basically some estimates of reduction in gain in the table if we have different types of hair coat. Again, if we're clean and dry, and up here 20 to 30 degrees, basically no, no reduction. Uh, if we get down here to zero to 10, we can see some reduction on those days. And if we're matted and wet, we get some pretty severe reductions, even if we're at 20 to 30 degrees. So 
we take those numbers and look at the percents again that we had in each of those. If we reduce the wind, this would have been the percent days, and this would have been the percent days if there were a dry hair coat. Take each of those times our estimate in the preceding table of reduced gain, and we come up with kind of a time-weighted percentage gain increase by having shelter. Um, you can see that reducing wind provides us some impact here from zero up to 30 degrees and basically if we're kept dry from zero up to 40 degrees we get some impact. Overall we're looking over a year period about a half a percent increase in gain from reducing wind and about a three and a quarter percent increase uh, by keeping them dry. Add those together we get about 3.75 percent increase uh, in gain from just providing wind reduction keeping hair coats dry with shelter. How does that compare to those other factors or other indexes, the wind chill index, cattle comfort index? Again, we're not looking at gain here, but 20% of the time it was below 20 degree wind chill index, and we could reduce that to 15% of the time if we factored in wind at one third of actual. Cattle comfort index, a little bit higher level of stress. Most of that was in a mild or moderate stress condition. And we reduce that to 25% of the time with a wind speed reduction again. So to summarize cold stress, we, at least from the period of time we looked at, and just taking into impact a, a hair coat uh, insulation reduction when it was raining or snowing, not necessarily mud, um, cold stress impacted cattle about 15 to 20% of the time. Most of that was in a temperature range of 10 to 40 degrees. Shelter could provide, reduce that cold stress by reducing the wind speed and keeping the cattle dry. And keeping the cattle dry improves performance or gain approximately half percent and three and a half percent over a year period, not necessarily one feeding period, if, if we kept the cattle dry. So add those together, three to four percent per year. Finally, the other thing we'd sure want to mention, if uh, cattle are in cold stress, bedding certainly offsets some of that. This was an outside lot. You can see the difference between no bedding and different levels of bedding and what, how that impacted gain and gain to feed in this North Dakota State study. So bedding certainly has some value in impacting cold stress as well. So again, there are other videos available in the series on feedlot facilities. We also have a beef feedlot systems manual that you can access at the website that you see there. We've got a calculator uh, that does some economic assessment of different types of facilities. In fact, there's another video kind of previewing that economic assessment calculator in this series. And then you can contact your Extension Beef Specialist as well. Uh, thank you, and I uh, hope you have a good day.